holy moly, you and I have what we call a nail biter of an election here in 2020. We don't know yet who is claiming victory. We don't know if President Trump is going to continue another four more years, or do we have Joe Biden replacing Trump as a president-elect? We don't know that yet, but what we do know, we have six states outstanding. Uh, we have uh, Nevada still outstanding. Uh, we have uh, um, uh, Arizona. They're even having a conversation about Arizona votes. Uh, they're having a conversation about uh, Georgia, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Wisconsin, and Michigan. And we are doing the math last night. I, I literally just flew up from Texas. I'm back now in Chicago. Literally flew up. We did a podcast last night on the Bet David Show podcast on Value Tainment, hosted by Patrick Bet David. And uh, we are doing the math. We are doing the math on these states that still had outstanding votes, that had a good percentage of votes already counted for, that had uh, 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 votes necessary for Joe Biden to beat Trump in those particular states. And we're doing the math. And in and, and many states, Joe Biden need another 65% more uh, votes to beat Trump in those states to claim victory in that state. So when Trump last night went on the press conference, I think it was like 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, to announce his thoughts about what's going on with the, with the elections, to some extent, he was doing the math. He was showing the data. He was actually truthfully correct that some states that if certain states just don't end up flipping towards more Biden votes, those states then potentially are now Trump won. Now, how he said it and how the media's taking it, of course, they're, oh, he's claiming victory, so undemocratic, whatever. Anyway, I don't want to get into that, but a lot of people are feeling a lot of stress, a lot more now. Uh, if you had pre-election stress, you definitely got a lot of stress right now. Some of you guys are saying, listen, I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> I'm going to go back to crushing it. I get it. But I want to share with you two victories last night. Two victories last night that we're, we were uh, 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 overlooking because of the election, but two victories, two major victories came in favor of those that watch my YouTube channel, those that want to think like a millionaire, those that want to strategize and obviously become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Two major victories happened um, regardless of the presidential election, but they happened in both states of California and Illinois. What am I talking about? Two things. I'm talking about Prop 22 in California and I'm talking about the Illinois progressive tax in Illinois. Let's start with my home state, Illinois. Well, the progressive state income tax was something that Governor Pritzker here, the new governor, the billionaire governor, uh, uh, he inherited his wealth. Obviously, he's a Pritzker. He inherited his wealth. The Pritzker family, if you don't know this already, they, they, they own a lot of uh, businesses. Uh, predominantly, they own uh, the Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. They own the Hyatt Hotels. Uh, a lot of the schools and hospitals here in the city of Chicago have the Pritzker name. Schools have the Pritzker name on the side of the buildings that, that, uh, they, that they have contributed to. But Pritzker here donated $58 million of his own money to vote yes for this fairness campaign, the, the, the ta uh, uh, yes for fi uh, fairness in our taxes. And he uh, contributed another one and a half million dollars in October, but no individual or group donated more to this initiative, this amendment to sweeping tax reform here in Illinois, nor no other group or individual donated more than $1,500. <laughs> so you got this governor, he's funding it with his own 58, 59 and a half million dollars, but nobody, no organization, no individual person donated more than $1,500. In other words, here's what I say about the money game. We put our money where our mouth is. So it doesn't seem like a lot of people had a big mouth when it came to changing taxes progressively here in Illinois. In other words, what I mean by progressive taxes, the more money you make, the more money Illinois is going to tax you, which was on the ballot last night. So three things that would have happened if this progressive tax would have voted, which by the way, they said no. Early in the year, in March, a poll showed that 65% of Illinois voters supported the graduated income tax. However, on election day, it flipped to 55% against it. Here's what would have happened. Three things would have happened if they would have put this into motion. Number one, they would have looked at taxing more of our senior citizens, more of our retirees, more on their retirement income. Increased tax on that. The second thing, municipal income taxes. In other words, if you're doing business in the city of Chicago, based on that city, they would have taxed you more business tax and income tax just because you're living in the city of Chicago. On top of your property taxes, on top of your sales tax, on top of any other tax you're paying, they would have added another municipal income tax, which would have been more, uh, which would have been something that would include the progressive income tax had it been voted in. Number three, four million taxpayers would also have to suffer a marriage penalty. What? Under the progressive income tax amendment, by filing jointly, their combined income would have pushed them into a higher tax bracket, costing them $2,500 more in taxes on average. So I'm glad, my fellow Illinois, Illinoisians, how do you say that? Illinoisians, 
Thank you for saying no to the progressive income tax here in the state of Illinois. Now let's move on to California. California said, hey, let's look at this company called Uber. Let's look at this company called Lyft. Let's look at this company called DoorDash and Instacart. Postmates. Anywhere you have a gig, anywhere you can have an app, I can deliver food, I can drive people around. There was an attack on this industry. Uber was created during, during 2009 during the Great Recession. However, uh, Governor Newsom passed a law called AB5, which made it harder for gig companies. In other words, you have a gig. You know, I got a gig here, I got a gig here, I got a job here, I got a job there. I don't have a full-time job, I don't have a part-time job, I have a gig. As soon as that gig is done, I don't get paid, okay? That's what Uber and Lyft turned into. It turned into a gig economy, which is what a lot of our economy is turning into. People working from home, I got a gig here, I got a gig there, I control my time, I control my schedule. Yes, if I do this gig, I get paid this much. If I do this gig, I get paid that, uh, this much. People were happy with that. But Go uh, Governor Newsom says, AB5 says, no, you guys are working too hard for the companies you have a gig for. You're really employees. So we want to give you, because you are employees, we want to give you employee benefits like minimum wage, overtime, health coverage, paid sick leave, and the right to form a union. However, Prop 22 was, uh, was created. And they said, no, no, no. These people want to remain as independent contractors. Let me tell you something about the importance of being an independent, independent contractor. Before I became a full-fledged entrepreneur, I was an independent contractor. That's how I got a flavor of what the life was like a be, be, about being an entrepreneur. I went for the military. I went to the Marine Corps, eight years in the Marine Corps. I did a part-time gig as an insurance agent. I got licensed in the state of California. 66326 Life and Health. I started this transition, so I started making more money part time. They did, and my full time job as a as United States Marine as a sergeant in the Marine Corps. They gave me confidence and clarity, so I can transition out without dependent upon uh, another job or or the government for unemployment. So therefore, I can transition to this career independently as an independent contract. So this opportunity for people to have a gig to be an independent contractor was severely attacked by AB five. And so Uber put up 57 million, DoorDash 52 million, Lyft 49 million, Instacart 32 million, Postmates 13 million to say, no, these aren't employees. Well, thank goodness, California, you voted yes to Proposition 22, and uh, you guys are going to remain as independent contractors. So uh, I was just talking to one of my guys here. He says, listen, I would love to just be able to turn on the signal, turn off the signal, turn on the signal, turn off the signal, get paid, not get paid when I turn it on or off. Because I'm in control of that. See, here's what people want. They want upside potential. They don't want to be limited. They don't want no politics. They say, if I'm willing to work hard and grind it out, I'm willing to work the higher income. You don't have to pay me minimum wage. You don't have to pay me uh, 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 overtime. You don't have to pay me uh, 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 benefits. I'll earn that on my own. And that's what people are wanting. So, thankfully, th uh, uh, this was voted yes to Prop 22, which meant, which meant that if this got passed and they deemed those folks as employees, what would have happened to the rest of the gig economy? You wouldn't be able to work from home because you'd be classified as an employee. You wouldn't have freedom of time. You wouldn't be able to set your schedule because now you're gonna be working for a boss. And that's what people don't want. See, this is the land of home of the free and the brave. That's what America is. And so as I'm wrapping up, guys, and as we're waiting for the results of this election, I know everybody's biting their nails probably in, in some form or fashion, but here's some thoughts I want you to consider. When, you, when you're looking at happiness, you know, Dennis Prager came on the show last night on the Bed David uh, podcast, he says, happiness is not based on the United States of America. Happiness is not based on a job. Happiness is not even based on a business. Happiness is based on you. You got to find out how you are wired to be happy. And when it relates to money, relates to capitalism, relates, relates on you checking in, checking out, you got to figure out what makes you happy. Are you happy you're working for somebody or you're working, working, are you happy you're working for yourself? Many people in the seven figure squad are happier working for themselves because many people are entrepreneurs that are part of the Seven Figure Squad community versus entrepreneurs working for a company to get promoted to C-suite and get stocks and, and equity of a company. But many people that watch the Seven Figure Squad, myself, that was my journey. I'd rather build my own thing, create my own thing, be in control of my destiny, be, in, be the captain of my ship. Happiness is not based on that, it is based on you. Second thing I'd be thinking about. And Dennis Prager said something last night during the podcast. He said, the second thing is, as it relates to taking ownership Financial ownership, financial responsibility. Most people don't want to do that. That's why ABR fives are getting passed. Because we have some politicians that said, hey, if you vote me in, I'll give you benefits. Vote me in, I'll give you this. Vote me in, I'll give you that. Instead of dependency on you, you then defer dependency on somebody else, thinking somebody else can 
better take care of you. But if you want to think like a millionaire, if you want to become and strategize and become a first generation cash flow millionaire, you cannot depend on somebody else. You'd rather take responsibility here with these own hands. And you have to understand your human nature that naturally doesn't want to do it. So how do you overcome that? You have to have a mentor, a blueprint, people to keep you accountable. Because the journey of financial independence is not easy. I'll tell you that's not easy. A lot of people don't stay on that path because they realize that it's work. They, stay, they have to stay consistent. They have to stay accountable. Whether you're accountable to a person, a board, a mentor, you have to remain accountable. A lot of people don't want to remain accountable to anything. Um, but if you want to be in that level of seven figure and plus income, that's one of major tenets that you have to embrace is accountability and understand that your natural human nature doesn't want to embrace ownership and responsibility. And last but not least, number three, my encouragement to you is if you're thinking about beginning a business, start that business. If you're thinking about continuing your current business, find a way to innovate. And number three, if you're thinking about uh, other things that's out there for you, I'm getting a wave of emails from people saying, what do I do, what do I do? Listen, this is a moment for right now for you to discover and evaluate more opportunities. This is the moment. And now, regardless of what happens with the eventual outcome of the election of 2020, Bottom line is you still got to get to work. And I hope that you position yourself in a, in a way that you can take advantage of any opportunities may come your way, but you have to understand what an opportunity looks like, what it smells like, and what you have to do once you have it on your lap. That's part of this journey of going on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel is think, strategize, and become. Because as I wrap stuff up, you know, the thoughts of you depending on government, you depending on a politician, you depending on somebody else. You know, oftentimes people think they need a handout to get a hand up. And I'm living testimony that you don't. It's these hands right here that give you a hand up in what you do with it on a daily basis. So as I wrap stuff up guys, a couple of videos I want you to check out. Number one, I want you to watch this video, the stress that you're facing, not only pre-election, but post-election. Check out this video here. I shot this video right before the election day. Another video here too as well. I want you to take a look at how taxes can be used as an asset not a liability. It's not about getting a tax refund. It's not about getting taxes taken out of your paycheck when you have a normal job. It's how do you use those strategies and systems to be your advantage if you're looking to establish a trade or business. And Uncle Sam rewards those who want to do that based on suggestions with inside the IRS tax code if you want to pursue that path. Also, if you don't recognize, I'm wearing a hat of the Seven Figure Squad. We just launched our merch site. So up until now and November 11th, there's a 10% discount. Anybody goes to our merch site, sevenfiguresquad.com, orders merch. We have a Shopify uh, account set up. And uh, anybody that orders from that website, sevenfiguresquad.com, uh, there is a 10% discount for anybody who uses the code MSG10. MSG10 by the 10th, because November 11th, it's done. It's over. So please check out this website, Seven Figure Squad, to get your merch. We got hats, we got shirts, we got hoodies, we got backpacks. What else? We got polo shirts. We got some gear there to help you remind yourself of thinking like a millionaire. The mindset of a millionaire of the Seven Figure Squad merch site. Go check it out, sevenfiguresquad.com. So with that being said, guys, I love to know your thoughts. I love to know your feedback. What do you think about the election? What's going on with the election? Drop it in the comments section below. What do you think about ABR5? What do you think about Prop 22? What do you think about you continuing to be an independent contractor? What do you think about you not having to pay progressively more income tax here in the state of Illinois? Because before they reform our taxes, don't you think they should reform our pension system first? I mean, Illinois, we're the worst pension system in the United, entire United States. So have them work on that first before sticking their hands in our pockets. But anyway, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Love to know what you're thinking. With that being said, guys, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.